for Christmas as my pulpit brought out. <laughs> We're starting a new series today. Love you, man. Starting a new series today called All I Want for Christmas. And that could bring all different things to your memory. Maybe it's a certain gift, a certain experience, or maybe when you hear this song, it reminds you all I want for Christmas is what? My two front teeth. Hopefully, we're going to go a little bit deeper than that in this series. But when you think about it, we're going to start off with what I think is so important. And we've called it this, all I want for Christmas is some peace and quiet. Can I have an amen to that? I'll tell you what, it is such a hassled time of year, a hurried time of year, busyness. And if you were to go up to people on the street and say, what brings you peace? They'd probably share some circumstance, some situation. But the problem is when that circumstance or situation changes, the peace goes right out the window. I saw that this past week. I was sitting in a waiting room waiting for a procedure to be done on an individual. And as I was sitting in the waiting room, there was an elderly man sitting on the other side of the waiting room. And he was obviously quite nervous about the procedure he was going to have done. He talked loudly, boisterously, incessantly. And he kept going and going and going. Anybody ever been in that kind of situation? I mean, you're sitting there, you're waiting, and you're wondering what's going to be happening. And he was just going and going and going. And on top of that, I had another man sitting next to me who was mumbling under his breath. I wish he'd just shut up. I wish he'd just shut up. Now, add to that, I'm sitting there trying to study for a message on peace. And I was like, what is going on here? And this guy is mumbling away, and he said, he's giving me a migraine. Would he just shut up? And he was going on, and this guy was going on, and this guy was mumbling, and I was like, ah, I wanted just to stop. Finally, the guy who was having the procedure was called back, and he went back. And the guy sitting next to me, as if on cue, heaved a sigh of relief and then said, I just want some peace and quiet. And I thought, that'll preach. <laughs> All I want is some peace and quiet. Maybe some of you get it when you're traveling for the holidays, traveling long distance. You've listened to all the music you can listen to. You've listened to all the podcasts you can listen to. You've caught up on all my sermons, right? But whatever. And you're sitting there and you're saying, right now, I just want quiet. My parents made up, or what I thought made up, a game with us called the quiet game. You know it wasn't made up by them because you've done the same thing. How long can you go without saying a word? How long can you go without poking your brother or poking your sister? I just want some peace and quiet. What is peace anyway? In Isaiah chapter 9, you probably on the front of many Christmas cards, it says his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. What? Prince of Peace. Or Luke chapter 2 says, I bring you good news of great joy. And then the angels cried out, glory to God in the highest, peace on those whom his favor rests. What is peace? Peace is an internal sense of calm when the outside is in total turmoil. When everything else has fallen apart, peace is that quiet confidence that everything is under control. I can remember as a kid walking down the street, and as we walked down the street near our home, there was this electrical power plant. That's why I glow the way I do. There was this electrical power plant, and when I'd walk past these generators that produced all the electricity for our village, when you walked at night, there was a quiet hum of all the generators working together. And I thought, that's really what peace is, that quiet confidence. Where do you need peace today? We're going to look at three different areas, three areas that everyday people need peace. And you're going to find that at least one of these three areas are going to speak to your heart. 
at least one of these three areas are going to be able to encourage you in this area of peace. Take out your Bibles. Turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. You don't have a Bible? Pull one out from the seat in front of you, or you can follow along on the screen. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, read it with me, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, read verse 1 with me again. Now, understand when I say read with me, that means it's a command because I'm up here in charge for the next few moments, all right? So I want everybody to read it together. Verse 1, read it with me. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then in verse 2, it says this, through whom we've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and now boast in the hope of the glory of God. The first peace that all of us need, mark it down, is peace with God. Peace with God. Now unpack this verse. Go back to verse 1. He says, we have been justified, or the term literally means legally declared righteous. Legally, God has said judiciously, you are now seen as righteous. Now, that's pretty hard for us because you know you're a sinner. Some of you have already sinned today and the day's just started. Maybe it's an attitude, maybe it's a thought, maybe it's an action, whatever it is. We've all sinned. We've all sinned and we've fallen short of God's glory. And the Apostle Paul says here, therefore, we have been declared righteous because of your faith. Your faith in what Christ has done for you. You see, we turned our backs on God. We turned our backs on God, but God had a plan. He wanted us to have peace with him. So the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the person who said that was Jesus himself, to have peace with God. But the problem is, we've been separated from God. Our sins have separated us from God. But the remedy is the cross. The remedy is the cross. On the cross, Christ, the scripture says, hung on that cross, bore our sins in his body when he hung on that cross so we could be set free. So we could have peace with God. And our response is only to trust Christ. To receive Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. So that as a result, we can know that we have eternal life. Listen. The saddest thing that I hear all week long is when I get a chance to ask people this question. If you were to die today, do you know that you go to heaven? Do you know what most people tell me? I hope so. I hope so. I hope I've done enough. Hope I've given enough. Hope I haven't broken too many of the Ten Commandments. Hope I've been in church enough. I hope so. Listen. You don't have to depend on a a hope so. You can know that you have peace with God. Because Christ gave his life for you. He gave his life so you could be set free. And as a result, the scripture says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so you need to only say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done bad things. And I know my sins separate me from God. But I choose today to trust only in what Christ did for me on the cross, that he was buried and came back to life just for me. I'm not going to trust in my good works anymore. I'm just going to trust in Jesus alone, and then you can have peace with God. Let me tell you, my friends, what happened this morning during the 930 service. I preached that same message, and afterwards, a 10-year-old boy came up to me after the service and he said, Pastor, today I trusted Christ as my Savior. And I got to tell you the the, the best part of it, he was sitting, third row, last chair. 
And during the sermon, when I got to this point and I saw him, and I know this young man, and I looked at him, and in my heart, I don't know why, but God put on my heart to pray specifically for him that he would open his heart up to Christ. And I was praying. I was like, Lord, I don't even know if he knows you or not, but for some reason you put him on my heart to pray as I'm preaching. See, I can do more than one thing at a time. And I was praying as I was preaching. So when I look at you, you may wonder what I'm praying when I look at you too. But anyway, I looked at him, and I saw saw him, and I said, Lord, open up his heart. And he came up to me. His eyes were wide as could be. He had a big smile on his face. He said, right now, today I trusted Christ. And he said, Pastor, I even marked it on the Connect card. So that makes it sealed for sure. <laughs> and I got to stand there with him and to stand there with him and as a result to go ahead and show him. And I put his hand up in the air and I said, I want you to hold up your hand. And he held up his hand and I said, I want you to say this with me. I will never leave you. And he held up his hand and he said, I will never leave you. And he, he was just smiling. His mom was crying. He was standing there together with me. And he said, I said, you can now know that you got peace with God because Christ is in you and he's never going to leave you. Let me tell you what, no matter what else happens today, it was worth getting up today. Peace with God. Yes, I know I kicked it over, all right? There. You specific, detailed people are like, is he going to notice that he kicked over the light? What's going on here? Do you have peace with God? The past three weeks, I have done three funerals. The first one was of a man who trusted Christ years ago. The second one was of a woman who trusted Christ weeks ago. And the third one this past week was a man who trusted Christ just days ago. And as a result, I can tell you with confidence, when they finish their lifely time on this earth and they open their eyes up in heaven, Jesus was standing there saying, welcome home, come on in. You see, you can have peace with God when you trust Christ as your Savior peace with God. There's a second peace. Maybe you already have peace with God, but there's a second peace, and it's found in Philippians chapter 4, a letter the apostle Paul wrote while he was sitting in jail, sitting in prison. Look what he said. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Verse 7, read it with me. And the peace of God, read it with me again. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We have not only peace with God, we can have the peace of God. We can have the peace of God in our heart. Listen, this scripture passage here says, don't be stressed, don't be anxious, don't be worried about anything. But when those worries come up, listen to me, listen to me what he says. When those worries come up, get on your knees and present what you're worried about to God. And he tells you he will take your worry, your stress, your fear, and give you his own personal peace. The peace of God. Now, I'm not talking about some of you who may have clinical anxiety, clinical stress that you go through. You may need therapy. You may need medicine. I'm not talking. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. No, I'm not. You may deal with that, and you may have to have medicine or therapy to deal with that, and you need to do that to get help, but I'm talking about the rest of us who struggle with worry, with stress, with fear. Listen, God is saying to us here today, take whatever is causing you, that's what that word request means, whatever is causing you the worry, the stress, the fear, and give it to him. Listen, I struggled with worry for years. I grew up in a family of worriers. It's in our lineage. People worry, worry, worry about worrying. I mean, they just worry about everything. I, I, and I'm beginning to learn, I'm learning, I'm learning about how to apply this first. Listen, this past weekend, my youngest daughter, my youngest child, only daughter, my youngest child turned 21. 
You talk about worries? I mean, I got worries galore. And I was like, well, we had our cake this past weekend and had the number two and one on the cake. And my, one of my sons turned to, to Lydia and said, you know, Dad and Mom wish it was one, two, 12, not 21. <laughs> and you know what? I just had to learn. When I started to worry about my kids, I got to give it to God. And when I give it to God, you know what he gives me? He promises me right here. He's going to give me his own personal peace. His own personal peace is going to set guard on my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. He's sitting in a jail. He's sitting in a prison and says the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. I was trying to come up with a story, an illustration to picture this. And I came across an account in the New Testament. See if you can relate to this. Just follow on the screen. That day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Now notice, He's got a bunch of fishermen with him in a boat. And they're now saying it's a furious squall. This is a big rip-snorter storm. And so it comes upon them. Now, where's Jesus? Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Now, picture that. You're in this rip-snorter storm. Where's Jesus when you need him? Asleep. On a cushion. Good to know. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Now, I want us all to read this like you were those disciples. All right? They didn't, re- they did- they didn't say it in King James English. It's like, Teacher, dost thou not care that we drown? All right? You're in a storm. You're in a boat. You're not on a cruise ship. You're in a little fishing boat. And you're in a storm, and I want us to read it just like they would have said it. Ready? Together. One, two, three. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? You've done that before. (laughs) And so he got up. He rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, Quiet, be still. In the Greek, it means hush you mouth. Does look it up. Be still. The one who created the waves, the one who created the wind, the one who creates the storm says, Stop. And the wind died down. And it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you afraid? If that is not the most obvious question in the world. Because we're in a rip-snorter storm, that's why. And he says, do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. Rembrandt painted only one picture of a seascape. And it was of this account. Look at the picture. And if you were to look carefully at this painting you would find there are 14 characters on that boat. When he was asked why there's 14 characters on the boat, he said this, 12 disciples, Jesus, and me. And I'm the one sitting closest to Jesus. As the kid's song goes, with Christ in the boat, I can smile at the storm. I can have the peace of God. Isaiah 26.3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Some of you need the peace of God today. You need the peace of God by presenting your request to him and letting him give you his personal peace. Peace with God, peace of God, third peace. Ephesians 6.15, Apostle Paul is wrapping up his discussion of the armor that we as Christians are to wear in our fight. And he said this, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes, read it with me, from the gospel of peace. The word gospel means good news. 
The good news that Christ came to die for sinners. The good news that Christ came to set people free. And it says, with your shoes on, with your feet set up, with a readiness, with the gospel of peace. What does that mean? That we are supposed to be ready to share the truth with the people around us. We have peace with God. We have the peace of God. We are now called to be agents of peace from God. We are called to be agents of his peace. The Apostle Paul said it this way in Romans 15, 20. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ is not known. Love it. He says, look, I got the peace with God. I got the peace of God flowing through my life. And he said, now I got this purpose. Now I've got this vision. I've got this whole idea. Here's the question. Do you share the peace from God with others? We are in a time of year where it's the best time ever to share the gospel, to share the good news by just inviting someone to one of our events that we have here. Whether it's one of the Christmas services or Christmas Eve or when you came in, you got an invite card which is designed for you to give to someone else to invite them to one of the Christmas services or Christmas Eve or the Blitz Christmas event that's coming up. All of these are tools that we can use. Some of you are going to participate in the Christmas store this Saturday where we're going to minister to over 100 families the love of Christ because of your generosity and your service. You're going to be agents of peace from God. And if you're serving in that, I want to encourage you to come in here with a smile and with the peace of God flowing through you so you can be an agent of peace from God to people that are looking for peace. That's why we do it. Or I learned of another another need this week. We have a team going to Haiti. We send a team each Christmas. On December 27th, we're going to send a team to an orphanage in Haiti. And we need 40 sets of twin sheets and 40 bath towels for these kids. Not white, all right? We need 40 twin sheets, 40 bath towels. I need 80 people, 80 people today to mark on their Connect card, I'll buy some sheets. I'll buy some towels so we can count on you bringing these in during the month for us to collect together, send off with our team to bless these kids with. See, we've got the privilege of showing the peace from God. The Apostle Paul wrote this in 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace, read it with me. Now may the Lord of peace himself, stop there. May the Lord of peace himself, listen, listen, listen. He doesn't just send peace into your heart, he sends himself. The Lord of peace himself, read it with me. Give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of us. You. Where do you need peace and quiet? Maybe some of you need peace with God. And today is the day, just like my 10-year-old friend who trusted Christ as a Savior, you need to open up your heart to Christ and put your faith and trust in Him and Him alone. Or maybe you're carrying a burden and you need the peace of God. Or maybe you've been challenged to be an agent of peace from God to people that are hurting. We're going to give you a chance right now. We're going to play a video. There'll be no music, no sound, just you talking to the Lord and asking him, where do I need your peace? And for you to choose, whether it's peace with God, peace of God, or being an agent of peace from God, Focus on the screen.
Father in heaven, thank you so much for sending the Prince of Peace. And I pray today that decisions will be made to make peace with you, to receive your peace and replace our worries and to remind us and equip us to be agents of peace to others. In this world in which we live, filled with danger and evil and stress, may we rejoice that peace has come in the person of your Son. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Church, let's stand together and worship together, praising Him.